Hello, and welcome to my tutorial on how to make a 2D game in Unity. In this video, we're going to add a character to our game, and we're going to talk a bit about rigid bodies and colliders, which we will add to our character so that when we hit play, our character falls right to the ground and has now physics being applied to him and the world around him. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to our hierarchy window, we're going to right click, and we're going to go down to create empty to make an empty game object. We're going to rename this player and then we're going to hit add component type in sprite and then you should see sprite renderer right here. As of right now we don't have a sprite to put in here so we're going to go over here and inside our assets folder we're going to go to main character and I'm going to use virtual guy for my main character. You can pick whom you want. So, right here we have under each of these double jump, fall, hit, idle, jump, run, wall jump. If you click on it, you'll see that you have a bunch of sprites, and these are what are we are going to utilize for our animations. But right now we just want to get our character on the screen. So, we're just going to use this idle one. So, we're going to expand it out and here you can see all the little animations or all the little individual sprites that are drawn just a little bit differently to give our character the semblance of standing idle. And well, I'm going to click on this first one. I'm going to go back to our game object and I'm going to go ahead and put him, drag him right here where it says sprite. And now you can see he's really really small. So to fix that we're going to click again here on the idle and you can see that its pixels per unit is 100 but if you remember we set ours to 16 so we're gonna hit apply and boom our character is now been sized to a more usable level so we're gonna click again on our game object which we should have named player there we go so then we're just, if you can see right now, I have the directional arrows on him. I can now move him around. And I can just place him into a starting position for where he can begin the game. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here again. We're going to click Add Component. And we're going to add a rigid body to this. Now, if you notice, there are there's rigid body and then there's rigid body 2D. This right here is when you're applying a rigid body to 3D. And as you can guess, rigid body 2D is for two dimensional games like this platform that we're making. Now, right up here at the top, we have body type. And if we click down, we're going to see three different categories dynamic, kinematic, and static. And so, dynamic in case of unity is when forces are applied to it like gravity, drag, and such. If we click to kinematic, kinematic is a study of physics that doesn't consider forces. That is why when we clicked on kinematic we, all the forces like the gravity disappeared. And static usually involves no movement so this is why the other categories of things disappeared that were here in kinematic. So, but we want dynamic. And as you can see, we have mass and gravity. And now we're just going to play with the gravity just a bit to show you exactly how it works. I'm going to move my little guy up here. I'm going to hit play. And he drops right down. And he fell right through everything because he doesn't have a collider, which is the next thing we're going to talk about. So, I'm going to stop. And now you can change the gravity based on how fast or slow or e you want him to fall. So I can change it to 50. And I can hit play and he's going to fall a lot faster. It fell so fast it was like he disappeared. And likewise I can do this in reverse. I can make this negative one and I could hit it and he's going to rise up in the air like so. So we'll just leave this as one. So now we're going to make it so our player just doesn't fall through the ground when we hit play. We're going to go over here again into our inspector window for our player character. We're going to hit add component. 
And if you were to type in box, you would see the 3D box collider and the 2D box collider. You're going to hit that, and if you notice right now, we have this green box around our character. And I'll just get rid of the blue background so we can get it easier. If you have a sprite or anything anything that's a component on here, it almost always has a little check mark, which means it's being activated in the scene. If I were to unclick this, our sprite would disappear. So to make us uh, see our box collider a little easier, I'm just going to click on this and just get rid of our background for a second. So going back to our player character, you'll see that this has this green box around it. Now this is the hitbox, for lack of a better word, of our player. Oops. So this is far too big of a hitbox. We want to shrink this down a little bit. So we're going to go over here to where it says Edit Bounding Volume. I'm going to click on it. And now we got these little boxes here that are going to allow us to change the size of our hitbox. So just click on the box, move it in. I'm just going to put it right on the edge of his goggles there. I'll move mine a little bit in from that, what looks like a strap, I guess, to his goggles. And then I'm going to move this down to the top of his head. And you can make your hitbox any size you want for your game. If you want a little smaller of a hitbox, go ahead and make it smaller. So now we're going to zoom out. And if you didn't know, if you hit your right mouse button, you'll get this little hand. And you can grab your scene and move it around to center it. Just center ours a little bit. And we're going to hit play. And our guy's going to fall through the ground again because he, the there's no collider on any of our foreground. It's just an image there. So to fix this, we're going to hit Tile Map, which is what our foreground's in. And we're going to go down here, we're going to click Add Component. And if you just type Tile, you'll get Tile Map Collider 2D. I'm going to put that in, and as you can see, now all our tiles have a green box around it. It has a box collider on it. So now when we hit play, our little guy falls to the ground. So the next thing we have to fix is, if you look at uh, each individual block here, there is a collider for each of them. Each one has their own green box. So ideally, though, we would like uh, just one green box around this whole platform and on the ground, because then what we'll end up with is we'll literally have cracks in our ground, and that could be problematic with some of the things we want to do in the future. So we're going to go over here to our tile map and we're going to add a composite collider 2D. And as you can see, it already attached a rigid body 2D to our tile map. Well, you can't have one without the other. Now, if you notice, it automatically made this dynamic. And as you see, when we hit play, everything falls. So to fix that, we're going to want to make this static. And then down over here in our tile map collider, it's going to say use by composite. So we're going to click that, and that connects this to this. And as you can see, now we have a nice singular green box for each individual portion of our tile map. And when we hit play, our character falls right to the ground just as before. That will be all for today. Next time, we're going to add movement to our character. As always, thank you for watching. Like my video. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And support me on Patreon. All links are in the description below. See you next time.